All right, in this next section of class, we are going to be, instead of integrating functions, we're going to be integrating vector fields. Um, applications to this include um, like finding the work done by a particle moving through a charge field, or um, we could find the work done by a space shuttle moving through a gravitational field. Um, and we're going to be calculating integrals to find this, these, to find work. Um, for these things. Uh, so we need to know what a vector field is, and essentially it's just a collection of vectors. So it's a collection of vectors. Um, you could think of it as for every point, every point is assigned a vector, sort of like a function. Like when you plug in x, it spits out a y. For a vector field, if you plug in a point, like an xy point, it's going to spit out a vector. Um, so here's a pretty simple example. So let's let's start with a 2D vector field. We can have 2D or 3D ones. Um, so let's start out with the vector field, two dimensions, and let's say it's x minus y in the i hat direction plus x in the j hat direction. So for every point, I'm going to make a table out of this. So I'm going to make a table with x, y, and then with the vector. So the vector x minus y as the x component and x as the y component. So let's just say that we pick the point 0, 1. So at the point 0, 1, there is going to be a vector. I'm going to take this 0, 1 and plug it in right here. So a vector of negative 1, 0. So that means that if I were to graph this vector field from the point 0, 1, so I'm right here, from that point 0, 1, there is going to be a vector that's going to point negative 1, in the x direction and zero in the y direction. So from that point, negative one, zero, it's gonna point negative one in the x direction and zero in the y direction. Now what if we go to the point one, zero? So from the point one, zero, get one minus zero, that's one, and x is one. So from the point 1, 0, from that point, there's going to be a vector that goes 1 in the x direction, 1 in the y direction. And, I don't know, let's do, let's do one more point. Let's do, say, the point, um, I don't want to hit a vector I've hit before, um, so maybe 2, 2. So from the point 2, 2, 2 minus 2 is 0, and then x is 2. So if I go to the point 1, 2, um, and then 1, 2 up, so there's the point 2, 2. The vector is going to go 0 in the x direction and 1, 2 in the y direction. Now, really, I'm going to give you an example of this in a little bit. Um, Vector fields are the complete collection of vectors. Um, this is hard to do by hand because it's pretty much impossible to pick infinitely many points and from those infinitely many points draw a vector. Um, but let's do another example. So let's sketch, let's sketch the vector field. Um, Let's have this one be a three-dimensional vector field. Zero, zero, x. So if you notice, the only thing that actually matters is that x component. Um, and let's do this again. Let's just pick a couple different points. And then we'll draw out what that vector would be. So let's say that we do 1, 0, 0. Then the vector we would get would be 0, 0, 1. Now this is three-dimensional. 
So if we go to the point x is 1, it's going, the vectors are going to go 1 in the z direction. And so that's the, that's the point where x is equal to 1, and they're just going to go up 1 in the z direction. Only up 1 in the z, nothing in x, nothing in y. Um, now notice that I could have put in any value for y and any value for z. It wouldn't matter. Um, we would still get a vector of 1 in that x direction. So I could draw another one right there. I could draw another one right there and right there and right there and right there. So these are all vectors where x is equal to 1. So now if we draw vectors where x is equal to 2, I'm just going to put in y and z, they could be anything, then we get vectors 0, 0, 2. So I'm going to come forward once more, and from there our vectors are going to go up, but this time 2. So all along that plane where x is equal to 2, I'm going to draw vectors that are of length 2. If we go back into the, the paper here. So if we come over into this region where we've got negative x's, so I don't know, let's just even do negative 1 and then any y and z, the vectors are going to go down 1 in the z direction. So if I go back into the paper 1, so that was forward 1, I'm going to go back into the paper 1, all of the vectors there would be down a length of 1. And you can see how messy this is getting. Um, we've got vectors where we had that negative 1. Those are back into the paper. We have vectors with a 2 that are way in front of the paper. two, that one was two, that one was two, and then we have vectors with a one that are in between those two. That one, that one, that one, that one. That one. Oh, it looks like I missed a, a negative one in there right there. So those orange ones are way out in front. The blue ones are in the middle and the red ones are in the back of the paper. On a 2D paper this is really hard really hard to see, but I just want you to get a general idea that in a vector field, at every single point, a vector is assigned to that point. Now we have some special vectors. So let's say if we wanted to draw a gravitational field. Gravitational field would be three-dimensional, where Gravity is stronger as you go towards the middle. So along the outside, gravity isn't going to be too big. The vectors are going to be weak. They're going to be small. But if we get more towards the center, these vectors are going to start getting a little bit bigger. As we get further towards the center, they're going to get even bigger. And as we get further towards the center, they're going to get even bigger. And at this point, I don't think I can draw anymore without making this a complete mess. But it gives you an idea of what a vector field would look like. The vectors would keep getting bigger as you go towards the inside. The other kind of a special vector field we can find are it's a gradient vector field. gradient vector field is the vector field that's found by taking the gradient. So the gradient of f, if this were two-dimensional, would be f sub x for the x and f sub y for the y. If it were three-dimensional, would be f sub x for the x, f sub y for the y, and then f sub z for the z component. So let's just say we wanted to find the gradient vector field and sketch for the function x squared over 2 plus y squared over 2. 
So the gradient, we would take the derivative with respect to x, so the 2 would come down and cancel, and we'd just be left with x. y is a constant, it would go away. Then we take the partial with respect to y, so the x goes away. 2 goes down in front of y, cancels the 2, and we're left with just y. So there's our gradient vector field. Now for sketching this one, I am going to um, find some software, and then I'm going to import an image of this um, so you can see what a vector field actually looks like without a hand sketch. Okay, here it is. Um, so you can notice the website that I got this off of. If you're interested in graphing any other vector fields, you can go to this website and then right in this box put in the vector field. That I is for the X component, J is for the Y component um, of the vector field. Um, I haven't played with this one to see if it does three-dimensional vector fields or not. Um, but at least you can get a picture of what the vector field looks like in here. So it's infinitely many vectors. Um, notice that as x and y increase, the length of the vector increases in this vector field. Um, but at least it gives you a visual as to what these things actually look like, because by hand we're not going to draw out that many vectors.